Hi guys, I'm Chris. I'm a medical doctor currently working in the west of Scotland in UK. Um, I recently completed my MRCP uh, UK this year and I thought of sharing some of my uh, experiences um, with you guys so you can benefit from it. Uh, for those of you who are sitting for you know either of the three parts, uh, good luck and I hope this video is useful. So let's get right into it. So MRCP stands for the membership of the Royal Colleges um, of Physicians of United Kingdom. It does seem like a mouthful. Basically, it is an examination that is required uh, for trainee doctors uh, to complete before entering specialty um, training in the UK. It is also approved by the General Medical Council, GMC, uh, as part of um, the postgraduate medical training program. It consists of three parts. Um, part one and two are written examinations uh, and they are basically MCQ questions. And the third part, also known as PACES, uh, is a clinical examination where you are required to take history and examine pat real patients with clinical signs under examination settings. I shall go into a little bit, a little bit more detail regarding the three parts. So part one is a one day examination consisting of two three hour long um, papers and each paper has about uh, well has 100 questions uh, as uh, in the format of multiple choice questions there are no images provided and the main aim of part one is to test the candidate's knowledge and understanding of basic sciences relevant to medical practice and this can include things like genetics statistics as well as clinical anatomy biochemistry and physiology Part two is similar to part one in the sense that it is also a one day examination um, comprising of two three hour long papers, each consisting of 100 uh, MCQ questions. The difference in part two lies in the fact that there are images provided and they include things like clinical photographs, ECGs, radiological images and pathological slides. The main aim of part two is therefore to test the candidate's ability to use their clinical judgment to diagnose, investigate and manage various medical conditions. The third part, also known as PACES, stands for um, Practical Assessment of uh, Clinical Examination Skills. It is a half-day clinical examination and usually takes place in a hospital setting, either a hospital or a clinical skills centre. There are five clinical stations in total forming a carousel. Uh, candidates are given 20 minutes in each station with five minute uh, period between each station. The clinical stations include both examination and history taking and they assess seven core clinical skills as stated in the MRCP UK website. The format actually was going to change this year uh, in order to make it more realistic for both trainees and uh, the examiners. However, because of the COVID-19 pandemic, it has been delayed to 2021 or till further notice. It is um, a requirement for medical trainees in the UK to complete their MRCP prior to starting specialty training. Trainees would need to have full MRCP uh, during their internal medical training before they become a registrar, so SD3 and above. Uh, this qualification is also recognised internationally uh, in various countries such as Singapore, Malaysia, Hong Kong and Iceland and you can use this uh, qualification to progress as well. So you can only take part one uh, after a minimum of 12 years uh, of postgraduate training and this normally means after FY1, starting FY2. Part 2 and PACES can only be taken after you've passed uh, Part 1. It is important to note that PACES can only be taken within 7 years of passing Part 1 and you don't need to go through Part 2 first before taking PACES. Depending on your uh, situation, circumstances, um, some people may opt to go straight into PACES before uh, going to Part 2. If you are a UK medical graduate uh, working in the UK, here are my suggestions. So first, start preparing for part one a few months uh, before finishing uh, FY1. Um, it is, and then try to apply for the third diet um, in sometime in September of the same year. This is because a lot of content uh, in part one is similar to the knowledge obtained in, during medical school. And so it will be a lot easier if you um, start early on. At the same time, it means giving yourself a bit more time to prepare and also to reseat if in the case you fail. Um, for part two, I would recommend um, sitting for it straight after part one. Again, part two is uh, mainly clinical rather than factual. So what you learn in part two is 
quite beneficial uh, to your day-to-day -day, um, clinical work. Also, uh, it is much easier to continue um, part two straight from part one, so as not to lose the momentum. Um, preparation for part one and part two is actually quite similar in terms of practicing exam questions. For the third part, paces, I recommend um, doing it after FY2. So this will give you a bit more time and break between, you know, part two and paces. If you're like me going straight into um, internal medical training, um, you probably wouldn't have time to prepare for both the examination and the um, medical interview. So I would suggest waiting till you are settled down in the hospital that you work in as an IMT1 and then start preparing by practicing on real patients. A lot of hospitals also do PACES teaching as well and they are basically um, bedside teaching on real patients with clinical science. So as an IMT trainee, I think you know, you'll be allowed and even encouraged to, to go for these uh, sessions. So you apply it through the MRCP UK website where you would see the different diets, um, dates, as well as fees uh, associated with the various parts. Um, if you haven't already, uh, you will need to create a free account with the uh, MRCP UK website in order to pay as well as register for the exam. Um, fortunately, and maybe unfortunately, um, UK trainees will be given priority uh, when sitting for paces, especially right now with COVID-19 pandemic, um, there is a delay in the um, PACES exam and so there is a backlog of people waiting to sit for it. As such, um, UK trainees, especially the ones needing um, to complete MRCP in order to progress, will be given priority in that sense. I think given you know the length of this video, I will just um, give you my tips and advice on preparing for part one and two. If you are interested to know more about PACES, do drop me a comment or a message. Um, and I can create a video on preparation for PACES. So firstly, it is important to scope the subject. Uh, it is important to know what is being tested in both parts in terms of the specialties, as well as the weightage each specialty is given for the two papers. Um, for example, part one has emphasis on clinical sciences and um, with around 25 questions on it. So I would make sure that I focus uh, on things like um, statistics, um, clinical physiology, biochemistry and anatomy. They can also test you on genetics and immunology as well, so make sure you understand these concepts. Uh, a large part chunk is allocated for clinical pharmacology and therapeutics, and this means you know pharmacodynamics and pharmacokinetics of various medi medication. Other specialties that are important for part one include cardiology, um, diabetes and endocrinology, gastroenterology, respiratory medicine, infectious diseases, neurology, renal medicine and rheumatology. Part two is slightly different from part one in the sense that it is more clinical than factual. Uh, it involves you know, making clinical diagnosis, coming up with investigations, interpreting the investigation results, as well as um, you know, managing the condition itself. So specialties that uh, you need, we need to emphasize on are cardiology, uh, diabetes and endocrinology, gastroenterology, infectious diseases, nephrology, neurology, and respiratory medicine, pretty similar to part one. Um, however, there are no basic sciences in this part. It is also important to um, know about therapeutics and toxicology, and this can include things like toxidromes, like serotonin syndrome, as well as drug uh, overdoses. The second point is to practice, practice and practice. Uh, it is important to keep practicing questions. At the moment, there are many books on the market on delivering content uh, on you know, MRCP part one and two. But personally, um, I don't find them particularly useful because I won't be able to retain knowledge simply just by uh, reading textbooks. It is far more effective and time efficient if you um, start you know, uh, practicing questions right from the very beginning. And there are many question banks that allow you to do so. Um, the popular ones in the UK include pass test, pass medicine, as well as BMJ on examination. Personally, I've used mainly pass test and pass medicine, and that's what I'm going to talk about. The good point about pass test is that it has one of the largest question banks on the market, with over 7,000 questions for part one and over 4,000 questions for part two. It also has past year papers, um, which um, have similar themed questions as the real examination. Uh, and as such, you can 
practice doing them under time limit to simulate the exam setting. You can also download questions to your mobile and tablet devices uh, so you can actually practice questions on the go. Um, one of the disadvantages um, is that the explanations may not be as thorough or as detailed as maybe other question banks. Uh, so you may need to do a bit more reading online um, by googling you know, certain terms, jargons or concepts. Um, personally, I've been using a lot of Wikipedia and I know this is frowned upon in medical school, but trust me, Wikipedia does you know, give you quick access uh, to simple explanation for difficult concepts. So I would highly recommend using Wikipedia. If you want to read more, then you can go back to looking at textbooks or you know, searching you know, medical websites. Um, the other bad point perhaps is that questions do repeat themselves. So even though there are 7,000 questions, they do you know, repeat. So you might find yourself doing the same kind of questions for a few times. Um, for some people, this is actually quite beneficial because the more you practice, the better you get at answering um, similar themed questions. The last thing is about um, price. So it costs about uh, 79 pounds or more, um, depending on how long you want your subscription to be. So it is definitely on the pricier side uh, compared to the rest of the question banks. For past medicine, uh, one of the good points is that the explanations are detailed and uh, questions are well structured. Um, past uh, medicine not only gives you reasoning behind uh, the allocated answers, it also gives you a summary of um, various topics and latest guidelines as well. So this will be quite useful when answering a question or similar themes in the future. So another thing about uh, past medicine is that it is uh, less costly than past test. It has a cheaper rate of around um, 30 pounds for three months and oh well, four months and 40 pounds for a six month subscription. However, one of the disadvantages of uh, past medicine is that it does not have as large of a question bank as past test. However, it does have a sizable uh, number of questions with over uh, 3,300 uh, MCQ questions for part one and over 2,400 uh, questions for part two. The other thing about past medicine is that it does not have an app format. So you will have to do questions on the computer, um, unfortunately. The last point that I want to mention when it comes to preparing for MRCP is to use active recall. So uh, it is important to use active recall in your learning as it is a proven uh, method of remembering things in the long run. And Ali Abdul, um, one of the YouTubers in um, Cambridge has done a fantastic job, you know, highlighting this. So one way of doing this uh, is through practice questions, as I've previously mentioned, where you try to use your existing knowledge to answer questions and build new layers of information on top of what you've got. Another method that I highly recommend is to use flashcards. Um, and this can be done through the old fashioned way um, by you know, writing down on you know, actual flashcards or doing it online, uh, such as Quizlet or Anki. So personally, I have been using mainly Anki for MRCP, and I have to say it is one of the best inventions out there when it comes to memorizing concepts and names. You can literally just uh, copy paste information um, that you want to remember onto Anki, and it also syncs with your phone and your tablets um, to allow you to access you know, flashcards anywhere you are. It also has a system to allow for space re repetition which means, you know, keeping your mind active and forcing it to remember the things that, you know, you have learned a while back. Um, lastly, I'm also an advocate for note taking and have been using OneNote as part of my MRCP preparation last time. With OneNote, you can create notes uh, easily by copying and pasting information uh, as well as pictures. It also allows you to sync with your tablets and your phone and you can access this any time of the day. However, the disadvantage of this is that you can't do it in a Q&A format. So you are just placing huge chunks of information on OneNote, but not being able to test yourself on the information that you have um, created. So um, lately I've been using Notion uh, as a result, as it allows you to do just that, creating Q&A using the toggle format. But I can talk about this uh, more in detail next time. Number one, preparation is key. Uh, it is important to be consistent and prepare early. So I would recommend, you know, sticking to a time schedule to make sure that you don't lose track and you cover all topics before, you know, the big day. 
I would advise to start early, come up with uh, a plan on how you would prepare uh, the exam. So work backwards. So first, you know, know when you're going to sit the exam and then work backwards to see, you know, how long you've got to cover the various topics. Do not underestimate the exam simply because it is an MCQ um, ex examination. The questions are tough and the topics covered are wide. I prepared the two parts by practicing about you know, 30 to 50 questions each day and more nearing uh, the date of the exam. I also use Anki to consolidate my information and will look at it every time I've got five minutes to spare. Some people do the question bank once, twice uh, to make sure that they remember as much as they can but this is actually going to take a long time. And if you are going to do this, I would advise you, you know, giving yourself a few months in order to go through the question banks a few times. Personally, I was only able to go through once because I'm someone who likes to read and understand the concepts so as to remember it long term. The last thing is uh, don't give up even when you fail. So absolutely never give up, uh, even if you fail the first time. A lot of good candidates I know they don't pass the first time. It doesn't mean that you're not a good candidate. It just means perhaps you might be unlucky on that day. So it is important to bear that in mind. You're not alone in this. And I think the thing is to keep practicing and keep calm and try again. I find it helpful to speak to people who are in the same situation as me um, and also people who have just finished the examination so that they can give you some tips and advice on how they uh, prepare for uh, the exam. Um, some people also find it useful to do questions together with other people just to make things a bit more interesting as it can get quite dull, boring if you practice the questions by yourself. It is also quite um, good to get another set of opinions looking at the same question. So lastly, um, with the COVID-19 pandemic, examinations have been suspended till autumn um, this year both in the UK and internationally. So there have been changes made to the way part one and two are delivered. And they are looking into, you know, doing it in a form of online assessments rather than actual pen and paper. The PACES format and delivery will also change with appropriate infection control measures. However, um, this has not been confirmed yet as of now. Priority again will be given to trainees who are working in the UK and especially to trainees who need the MRCP in order to progress through their training. Um, so I think in summary, MRCP is um, not an easy exam, but it's not an impossible exam. Don't give up even if you don't make it the first time. Try the methods that I've just um, suggested, um, look them up and who knows, you know, you might be successful the first time. And if you have any comments, any um, suggestions on future videos, do leave the comments down below and I will promise you I will read them. Alright, have a good day. Bye.